Hello everyone, I am Prakriti Khadal. So my question to Professor Sangrola is, Nepal and Hindustan have been very close friends in the past, but after some recent in incidents like blockade, India's interference in constitutional making, Madesh issues, and on some bitterness has been added to this relation. So according to you, how can the relation between Nepal and India be addressed and improved in the days to come? Well, uh, this question uh, demands uh, understanding first on very important issues like whether uh, India and Nepal have problem or India and Nepal have issues. What I have been arguing for a long time is that Nepal and India do not have problems, but we have a lot of issues. These issues have not been debated by think tanks between two countries in a right way. Uh, neither these uh, issues have been debated by the officials nor by the political leaders. Why they were not debated in between all these different categories of stakeholders is because these issues have been taken as problem but not as issues. So first thing what I do believe is that Nepal and India do not have problems but Nepal and India do have a lot of issues and firstly therefore this issue needs to be separated. Some issues are related with security some issues are related with Nepal and India's trade relation. Some issues have been related with the frontiers or the border between India and Nepal. And some issues have been often raised by Nepal as its deepest concern of some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, um, domination or kind of uh, a small brotherly treatment from India. Uh, that is, uh, that that means that uh, India's uh, overplay of its classical diplomacy in its neighbor. So, with these things need to be very clearly first understood. So, with this, where do I like to very briefly start? Is like India has become an economic power of the world today, but largely its diplomacy has not changed from the classical diplomacy. Which was, uh, 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 which was introduced by uh, Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, uh, whose policy was to uh, keep neighbors on a domination of India. She always thought that India is a big brother and other countries are small brothers. So that diplomacy was inculcated in the mind of Indian intellectual in such a deep way that whenever uh, Two, two people, Indian and Nepalese, meet. The first thing they say is that we are, we are, we are brothers, and Nepal is uh, our small brother. It's a kind of a traditional way. When they say that, I don't mean that they have a lot of prejudice against uh, Nepal. But what is interesting is like they have been so used to say that, and they believe that Nepal is a small brother. And as a small brother, they need or they expect. Uh, um, unlimited kind of loyalty from Nepal. Uh, they, they expect from Nepal that they, Nepal should always be with them. They also, uh, they also expect from Nepal that uh, Nepal should not speak without permission of India. It's a kind of psyche, which is a very important issue which Indian think tanks should understand, that Nepal and India are not brothers. Nepal and India are very good friends. If we take each other as very good friend, lot of issues will be resolved in themselves. Okay. Therefore, I often say, let's stop talking uh, brother, is small and big brother, or India is big country and Nepal is a small country. So I often quote and I often cite these two examples when, when I speak in India and Nepal. Once I told in India, when I was asked to speak about India-Nepal relation, and when the moderator was, uh, <coughs> moderator was uh, appreciating my presence over there as an intellectual from Nepal, uh, a small country, a small brother of India, uh, uh, something like that. So I asked like, what, what is, 
big and what is a small is relative. So I asked a participant over there, how many days it takes from Delhi to go down to Kanyakumari by walk? He said it takes uh, almost two months. I said, if I start from Kanchanjanga to start to Jumla, then it takes six months. So at least by walking, Nepal is bigger to India. So bigness and smallness are two different things. Okay, this is one. And then big and small is like, if you see the history, what I said in, also in Rajasthan and Delhi last time was that, if you see the history, Nepal has at least 2,500 uh, long history of recorded state or nation. If you further go back, uh, relation with uh, Magad and Nepal, then we have almost uh, 3,500 uh, years long history. So India was Magad and almost 600 principalities, uh, 600 kingdoms were in India and they were not called India, they were called Rajasthan, Maharashtra, uh, Cheri uh, and all these. So India actually emerged as a united uh, nation one day after, uh, uh, after Mughal came in uh, 11 and 12th century and then it became further integrated nation when British came. But Nepal has been at least 1700 years established recorded history uh, if you if you if you take uh, Changuna, the scripture in Changunara and some of the scriptures in Patan, uh, when Lichibi came, Nepal was a united kingdom. So, if history again, Nepal is uh, older. So Nepal is smaller. Suppose that we are dwarf, and India is very mature uh, and very grown up boy. So since younger brother is quite taller, where is the older brother is a dwarf? Being dwarf is younger? No. So again, we are brother. So this, this, this is a kind of thing. But these are jokes. India should understand this issue. So what is, I think, Nepal and India's relation at present after blockade is like, uh, blockade was a serious mistake. A serious mistake of India. But why India came to uh, put Nepal into blockade? Such a uh, was and such a very harsh kind of uh, treatment to Nepal. Uh, if you go deeper into research, what probably you can find and establish is that. At some point, <coughs> some Indian intellectual, uh, intellectual community or think tank in India started thinking that uh, if we have to contain Nepal, if we have to put Nepal under control, I think uh, the population in the down south should be created in favor of India. And with by use of this population that we can control India was a kind of a assumption or hypothesis created in Delhi. But how it was possible? How in, the, in, in India could develop this uh, philosophy? Very interestingly, what you need to understand is like, Nepal, after 1990, uh, came into a very severe Western influence and Western game, not because they were against Nepal, but that time in 1990s, communism was falling down in the world and Western countries were also equally very serious to create a fall down of the Chinese communism. Then you can see what happened in 94, 95, and 96 in Tiananmen Square, Soviet Union's town and all this. So for that, Nepal was used as a very important place for Western, uh, Western uh, uh, organizations to be in Nepal and then play against China. They were also playing against India at that time because India was a uh, ally to Soviet Union. Anyway, so from 1999, we were educated to have a restructuring of the state one. The restructuring was later on defined as federalism. So the federalism issue was first raised by uh, uh, United Mothers People's Forum, okay? And then government in Nepal had signed three points agreement where there was a demand uh, agreed by the government of Nepal, seven political parties of Nepal, that one Mothers, one Pradesh would be acceptable for the government of Nepal. So Sangeeta, that federalism came. Right after federalism was accepted by this three points agreement, then 
the federalism was further defined and it was asked to be ethnic federalism and then moment were created in hills. So every ethnic community was demanding demanding a province. Uh, believing that Nepal is going to have a big and terrible crisis in Nepal. That's one of the reasons like it was not possible to grant the constitution. Post constitution assembly was therefore stopped by the court and then next elections appeared. The whole uh, movement created by the Western donor agencies, Western international organization to create ethnic federalism collapsed. And then it was a big shock for them. It was really a big shock for them. So now they considered that it is not possible to create ethnic federalism. Why they made a mistake? Uh, from 1951, uh, the Western Gora scholars, like white scholars coming to Nepal and started saying that all discriminations and disparities that Nepal is facing today is created by Sanskritization. So that was what uh, inculcated in every mind. A sizable intellectual Nepal was very heavily influenced by it. Uh, that was a conspiracy, it was not true. But those literature prepared by people that time also uh, 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 very, concitedly, con very concitedly made uh, the Western younger generation of intellectuals to believe that yes, Sanskritization and Hinduism is the problem. So sure now, in after 1990, what the Western, Western intellectuals who were playing against Nepal believe that if we read a movement against Hinduism, Nepali language, Brahmin and Chetrich and he. If these issues have been raised and also uh, uh, women have been encouraged to fight against patri patriarchy uh, and we propose the idea of ethnic, uh, ethnic federalism, they believe that everybody will jump out like uh, uh, the swarm of uh, uh, insects and attack these uh, Sanskrit, Hinduism and other was a kind of their belief. But they it was a fake idea they sold that time. It was not like that. If you see the history and culture of Nepal, in any part of Nepal, the population of Nepal always existed in a mix-up or integration. So in Kirat Pradesh, Brahmin and Chhetris never forced Limbu and rice to follow Hinduism. They, uh, they never forced to wear Janai and uh, read Beda, okay? But Rai and Limbu in Kirat also did not uh, oppose Brahmin wearing uh, Janai and uh, also uh, uh, reading Veda. So that was a kind of uh, harmonious kind of, uh, very harmonious kind of relations between them. So their strategy failed. So they realized at this point that heel is not going to be provoked, heel is not going to be destroyed. Uh, the communalism. Uh, uh, is not going to work in hell. The harmonious coexistence between different ethnic groups is not possible to break in hell was a kind of their understanding. So they switched to Mades. So they switched all money to Mades. Billions of Nepalese rupees were sent to Mades. And what they started saying is that Mades is a separate nation. It is, your language is different, your culture is different, everything is so. They, they propagated the idea of multi-nationality uh, issue. They, 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 they propagated the idea <coughs> that Nepal is a multinationality nation. And then this uh, conspiracy uh, prepared uh, intellectuals in Madesh who could go to India and convince the Indian leadership, particularly BJP leadership, that Hill community is terribly exploiting Madesi community. Madesi community have been uh, deprived of their rights. Madesi community have been tortured by the uh, 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 Gorkha Forge, that means the Nepalese army. Uh, Nepalese police is uh, uh, exploiting and torturing the Madesi community. So every bad things was told with the fake statistics and jobs are not given. Uh, uh, Madeshis are not given employment in army. Madeshis are not given employment uh, uh, in other sectors. So these were things 
they propagated in India, and certain quarter of Indian leaders have believed it. And therefore, the, the, the project developed by Westerners uh, to create unstable Nepal so that they would, push, they would, uh, uh, they would uh, continue to remain in Nepal, and unstable Nepal would be a boon for them to contain both China and India. So that, that was a crisis they wanted to create. So it was a crisis created by them, but India came uh, uh, without uh, understanding of this problem. Therefore, these people convinced India to put a block it. But later on, right by right now, what India probably understands is that the multinationality concept introduced by some Western INGOs in Nepal is going to be poisonous, not for Nepal, but it is going to be so much poisonous to India because Nepal is a small country. The harmonious relation between communities is far better than in India, but Madras, Kerala, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, it's much more fragile and much more less integrated than Nepal. So multinationality concept would be a big problem for India. Probably now they have started understanding this problem uh, and they have learned probably that uh, it is something which is happening in Nepal is not targeted one day against China and Nepal, but it is acquired targeted against, uh, uh, against uh, India also. One very interesting thing what you should also not forget is the rising Hindu nationalism in uh, India. And that rising Hindu nationalism is a biggest threat to the Western interest. So, if you see from that perspective, Modi's government cannot be an alliance to the Western country. And if you see today, this rising Hindu nationalism in India has been so badly portrayed in any part of the world. So uh, uh, probably the Indian government also realized at this point that if Madhesis are instigated against government of Nepal, similar other community in India can also be instigated against Hindutva and uh, BJP and India, is what is now more and more coming, but it's still uh, pro-Western, pro-Western uh, think tank in India, which is uh, uh, so big in India because of these universities, uh, Western education system, Western media connections, and uh, everybody produced in accordance with the Western thinking, is still not realizing this, but uh, I think uh, Hindu nationalism is on a threat, they understand it. So the blockade is therefore now understood by India as a biggest mistake, biggest failure in its diplomacy, which actually put too strongly Nepal uh, not to uh, totally rely on India and seek solution for the transition and uh, seek solution for Nepal crisis becoming equally accessible to both China and India therefore. Right now, what I believe is like Nep Indian diplomacy is in uh, process of seat with regard to Nepal. What will happen when India become a very powerful country? More powerful India will be. Uh, I think uh, India's contest would not be with Nepal, with China. So, because their contest is between them, it is now not possible for both countries to totally influence Nepal and put under its control. Therefore, our position again has become diplomatically much stronger than in the past. So present Indian policy to Nepal is largely is a position to seek a better relation with Nepal. So what can we do is like, we can argue strongly these points and uh, we can have our open dialogue with Indian intellectuals, Indian students and Indian media and we have to show the Indian a very, very critical and very, very uh, uh, um, unreliable and unpredictable media India has, which does not work for the dissemination of information, but it always works for setting agenda. Okay, its objective is to set agenda, 
And what is very interesting is like it is a corporationist media now has emerged in India. It never protects the interest of the nation, but it protects the interest of the commercial corporationist uh, uh, power of the country. So Indian media is not serving Indian interests. It is serving the interest of uh, the rich people in India. Sure, uh, it can still be a big threat to Nepal, but uh, uh, we should be much more organized and research should be stronger and uh, collect information. Therefore, India cannot, uh, Indian medi media cannot uh, convince or cannot flare up ideas in other part of the world that Nepal is making a mistake. So our media should be stronger, our education system should be stronger, and uh, our government should be stronger. So it is a responsibility of each uh, student to uh, uh, become an ambassador of this country to India in, in terms of dialogue. Only then we can result and we can have a better situation in Nepal. Thank you.